Welcome back. Uh, with great pleasure, let me now bring on board Mr. Adi Godrej, Chairman of Godrej Group. Mr. Godrej, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Mr. Godrej, at the good current morning. juncture, how exactly would you map the dynamics of the FMCG sector? Do you worry about uh, demand moderation and the fact that most of the big FMCG companies have indicated that in the near term, a volume growth could take a hit? Well, I don't know about the FMCG industry because I don't keep track of all the sectors of the FMCG industry. But Godrej Consumer Products has had very good sales growth, uh, both in the financial year just completed, including the fourth quarter. And uh, we expect uh, to continue the strong growth in the first quarter of this year too. So we don't see any slowdown in the demand for our products. Mr. Kotrich, hi, good morning. Talk a little bit more about, you know, what is it that you're witnessing in terms of the current demand scenario? Do you see any revival with the discounts being offered by some companies? And how do you see panning it out for Godrich Consumer in particular? Well, Godrich Consumer sales growth continues to be very good, especially in rural India. We have introduced a lot of new products, a lot of innovative products. They are adding to sales growth. And our sales growth continues uh, very strong. So I expect the sales growth in the last quarter of uh, the previous year also has been very good. And the first quarter should also continue to be good. And with our new innovative products in the market, we expect growth will accelerate. Mr. Godrej, the good news here is that in the key categories, uh, in all your key categories, you managed to grow. Uh, so what is the secret sauce here, innovation or reach? I think innovation and reach. You see, we we merged two companies. Our erstwhile Godrej Sara Lee was merged into Godrej Consumer Product. They had separate distribution systems. We leveraged the strengths of each of the distribution systems, which has given us a much stronger reach across the country. Uh, whether it is geographically, whether it is uh, urban India, rural India. So that has helped us very considerably over the last couple of years. But the new innovative products we have introduced across the board, including a new category, for example, uh, we've gone into air fresheners. We had an air freshener which was licensed from the Sara Lee Corporation called Ambipio, but they sold that brand to Procter & Gamble, so we had to hand it over. Of course, we were paid the value of the brand in India. Now we've introduced our own air fresheners under the Godrej Air AER brand, which are, which are doing very well. We've introduced uh, new innovative products in our hair color range, in our household insecticides range, uh, and they, they are all doing very well. We've introduced, we've re, relaunched our major synthol brand, which is doing very well. We've added variants to our number one brand. So across the board, Godrej Consumer Products is doing exceedingly well in the Indian market. And of course, we are doing very well globally also. Our global growth, in fact, is higher than our Indian growth because that has an element of acquisition also to it. I was just coming to that point, Mr. Godrich. Give us a sense of what is happening with your international operations because there has been a wage hike in Indonesia. The Ar Argentinian government has frozen price increases. Will these factors impact Godrich consumer? Because a large chunk of your revenue uh, does come in from the international market. These factors will definitely affect us, but despite these factors, we are doing very well. So in Indonesia, despite the wage hike, our growth is very good. Our profit growth, sales growth are good. In Argentina, of course, the uh, price controls don't apply to most of our products, but we continue to do well. We'll find ways around these issues. And uh, of course, I can't talk now, but when we declare our results, you will see that we have grown well. In addition to that, in the fourth quarter, we had announced that we were going to uh, <coughs> sell our foods business, which is not a core business for us in Indonesia. That has been completed in quarter four, and we have received an excellent uh, valuation for that food business. So that will further add to our success in the fourth quarter of the last year. Uh, Mr. Goldrich, you have a very strong focus in emerging markets. Do you think if emerging market growth slows down, it could be a key challenge going forward for your company? Yes, but it's not slowing down. Emerging market growth continues to go well. Of course, if, if growth slows down, obviously it will be a challenge. But Indonesia's growth is very good. Africa's growth is good. Uh, so emerging markets are growing well. The only 
part of the geography in which there has been a slowdown in GDP growth is India. But despite the slowdown in GDP growth, our business has grown very well in India. In fact, I would say the growth rate in the last financial year where the GDP growth was lower than the previous financial year was as good or better than the previous financial year. Mm. Mr. Kaltris, talk a little bit more about how is it that you're seeing growth pan out in the rural markets? Well, uh, you see, you must remember that 20 years ago, most folks in rural India could barely keep body and soul uh, 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 together. They, they, they didn't earn too much. Now, with earnings increasing, both in terms of agricultural prices going up uh, in terms of non-agricultural incomes rising in rural area, in terms of government spending in rural area, their earnings are going up. Therefore, their discretionary income is going up tremendously. In fact, in some parts of rural India, you could see a 20% growth in discretionary spending year over year. So that is helping FMCG companies very considerably. And in our case, we have increased our rural reach tremendously because of the merger of our two companies. And we've leveraged the strengths of one for the other. And that has helped us tremendously in rural India over the last two years. Uh, Mr. Godaj, over the years, you have very efficiently used your cash flow. The nature of your business is such that you generate a lot of free, free cash flow every quarter. What do you propose to do with your future cash flows? Are you planning to conserve it or are you on lookout for big acquisitions? No, we will continue to look out for acquisitions in the developing world, which of course includes India, where there are good acquisitions to be had. And of course, we have also said that we would continue to increase our absolute dividends. We will, however, as a dividend, the ratio of our profits will keep coming down. We'll invest the rest uh, into acquisitions. Which are some of the big gaps in your FMCG portfolio where you are looking at plugging some holes? No, we don't look at it that way. If we look at what's available for acquisition in the developing world, including India, if that fits into our strategy, then uh, we, would, uh, we would look to acquire such brands. We're not saying that, oh, we need a toothpaste brand, so we'll go after toothpaste brand. That's very difficult to do because uh, these brands or companies must be in the market for sale uh, before we can look at the possibility of acquiring them. Mr. Carter, it's really good chatting with you. Appreciate you taking the time out and joining us this morning on ET Now. Quickly revisit what the market is currently up to. Well, um, the Nifty started off just about okay, 54. Um